Nigeria is Africa's most populous country and historically the continent's largest oil producer. Every day, up to 2 million barrels of oil are pumped from its wells, mainly to supply the markets of South Asia, North America and Europe. Almost all of the country's onshore oil output comes from the Niger Delta. The region is a 40,000 square kilometer labyrinth of wetlands, mangroves, marshland, swamp forests, creeks and farmlands dotted with over 5,000 oil wells and crisscrossed by over 21,000 kilometers of oil pipelines. Much of the country's oil production comes from Bielsa State, one of the nine states in the Niger Delta region. Although smaller than Connecticut in the U.S., Bielsa accounts for almost a fifth of Nigeria's total petroleum output and much of the gas deposit in Nigeria. However, this oil bonanza has brought limited benefits to Bielsa and has come at a terrible cost to the state and its people. Few countries on the face of the planet have suffered more from oil pollution than Nigeria. Over the last half century, as many as 10 million barrels of oil have been spilt across the country every single year for the last 50 years. That's equivalent to a spill similar in size to the Exxon Valdez catastrophe, which devastated the coast of Alaska. A few parts of Nigeria have suffered worse pollution than Bayelsa State, one of Nigeria's main oil producing states, accounting for almost a quarter of its onshore oil crude oil production and approximately a third of its oil wealth. It is home to one of Africa's most diverse ecosystems, a rich but fragile tapestry of wetlands and mangrove swamps. Since oil was first pumped in 1956 by Shell, Bielsa has suffered a pollution catastrophe on a barely imaginable scale. Exact numbers are hard to come by. However, analysis suggests that if Bielsa's share of oil spilt is the same as its share of oil pumped, as much as a barrel of oil may have been spilt for every man, woman and child living in Bielsa today. The impact has been devastating. The environmental damage has been tremendous and unique ecosystems have been destroyed. The health of hundreds of thousands of people has been affected by the contamination of the water they drink, the land they grow food on, and the air they breathe. Estimates suggest that the pollution could be responsible for as many as 16,000 infant deaths in one year alone. Thousands of communities and countless people have been cast into poverty with their livelihoods destroyed. Communities have been destabilized and their cohesion undermined by disputes and competition for resources arising from oil extraction, which have been sharpened by oil spills and their impacts. The cost, in terms of environmental degradation and human suffering, has been vast, and it is rising every day. What's more, the individuals and communities affected have found it almost impossible to win redress for their suffering. The oil companies have not done enough to put right the damages that have been caused and the cost and process involved have prevented communities from pursuing legal action. These international oil and gas companies, IOCs, include Shell, Chevron, Total, ExxonMobil, Eni, Ajib, and recently, ATO. Senator Henry Siraki Dixon, fourth executive governor of Bielsa State, who handed over to Senator Doye Diri, present governor of Bielsa State, was indeed a visionary political leader. Upon assuming the mantle of leadership of Bielsa State on February 14, 2012, the immediate past governor of Bielsa State and now senator representing Bielsa West Senatorial District, Senator Henry Siraki Dixon, left no one in doubt about his earnest desire to significantly and positively change the economic and socio-political landscape of the young state. His solemn pledge to the people of the state and his abiding commitment were firmly etched on the vision to place Bielsa on a loftier, enviable pedestal. This vision propelled him to take fundamental steps that have impacted upon every living soul that resides in the glory of all lands. A renowned lawyer, ex-policeman, activist, Senator Dixon, in this passionate bid to bring succor to the people of the state, 
set up the Bielsa State Oil and Environmental Commission, BSOEC, in March 2019. Whereas it is the obligation of the government of this state to protect our environment, to protect the lives and the well-being, and also the socio-economic and cultural well-being of our people, whereas all of this is within the powers of our state to do, now, therefore, by virtue of the powers conferred on me by Section 2.1 of the Commissions of Inquiry Law of this state, and in exercise of all other powers enabling me in that behalf, I, the Honorable Henry Sedaki Dixon, Governor of our state, hereby constitute and appoint this Commission of Inquiry into the environmental, health, socioeconomic, and cultural impact of the operations of all entities and companies here and after called the Commission. And for this purpose, I appoint the most reverend and right honorable Dr. Johnson Tamu Privy, Councillor, Archbishop of York, as chairman of this Commission. My Lord, by serving in this Commission, you and your members Unlike other leaders who prefer to look on or pretend not to know the destruction of livelihoods and the destruction of lives going on in the Niger Delta, you and your commission members um, are undertaking this as part of your work as global citizens. And we hope and pray that at the end of this work, the outcome and findings and recommendations will at least prick the conscience of the world that has so, for so long preferred to look the other way, while the dispolation of the environment and the devastation of communities and livelihoods in the Niger Delta continues. The commission, chaired by the former Archbishop of York, the Right Reverend and Right Honourable Lord St. Tamu Ph.D. Kantab, is made up of leaders from the world of government and faith, along with leading academic experts on the environmental, social and political, economic and health impacts of oil and gas activity in Nigeria's Niger Delta. It is the hope of the commission that we can exert increased pressure on Martin Oil or companies to operate to the same legal and moral responsibilities in Biosa State as would be expected in the United Kingdom, United States and Norway. Side by side with the BSOIC, Governor Dixon also launched the Rise for Bielsa Environmental Campaign in March 2019. The initiative was designed to galvanize Bielsans as a people to campaign against environmental degradation and attract global attention to the ravaging effects of oil spill, pollution and environmental degradation in the state. We mean that all our people get up and let their voices be heard. Let their voices for those of you who can speak, speak as loudly as you can. For those of you who can write, write as much as you can write. For those of you who have your networks, use your networks to tell our bias story. The story of how resilient our people are surviving in the midst of these enormous challenges. Defenseless and helpless, and deliberately made so by a government that cares more for the oil than for our lives. Suppression of our environmental rights have gone on for far too long in this state. This pollution is preventable and indeed it must stop. The fight against greed and carelessness of multinationals can only be won when global citizens come together and lean on the big companies to change their practices. For over four years, 
the Commission has undertaken extensive work to uncover the true scope and scale of the catastrophic environmental pollution that has befallen Bielsa. BSOEC has undertaken a series of scientific field studies into the effects of oil pollution in Bielsa, working with leading academic authorities to build up a unique picture of the scale and effects of oil pollution across the state. Between 2019 and 2020, the BSOEC visited pollution sites across Bielsa, held meetings in several communities, and took testimony from over 500 victims of oil pollution. The BSOEC also conducted a deep assessment of the evidence on oil pollution in Bielsa and conducted an extensive review of the available literature and documents, commissioned detailed studies on aspects of the impact of pollution, and conducted meetings with stakeholders locally, nationally, and internationally. The BSOEC's work was supported by an international network of environmental scientists and forensic experts a local expert research team, and a network of civil society actors with a long track record of documenting oil-related environmental damage in the Niger Delta. The Commission has made three extensive visits to the state and held town hall meetings with representatives from eight local government areas, Brass, Ekeremo, Southern Ijo, Ogbea, Kolokumopokuma, Sagbama, Yenegoa, and Nimbe. It's been a record around the 12-inch Adibawa Kodia flow line, where cassava farms were soaked. There are pictorial evidences even right now as we speak. But if you, if you look at the compensation they pay to the, the family and the community, it doesn't worth it at all because that area is no longer yielding cassava as I spoke to you. It's evidently clear if you go there, you see. What, what they paid then was about 500 and something thousand, if I'm not mistaken. It should be around 500 and something thousand compared to the, the vast land that was degraded and up to now, as I speak to you. Those who own the land can't make use of the land at all. The children that are suffering, like to be sincere, and some children now. If you see, if you go to the community, a lot of them they are coughing. So many, I don't know what to even call them. In the hospital, there are many there. We are waiting for our shell will now do something. We, we wait for about uh, two weeks. Even they said they will come two weeks, they are not coming. This time, the government of Bielsa State, the government and people of Bielsa State are determined to open up the rotten boils of IOC's uh, practices in the Niger Delta. And so this uh, commission is meant to properly, mathematically identify these problems, collate them in a manner that the deaf could properly hear, and then the blind can see. The BSWEC also held stakeholder meetings with professional groups, legal, health, oil servicing companies, civil society organizations, the Minister of the Environment, and NOSTRA. And uh, if you go to some communities, precisely in areas like Azuzama, Bomotoro, Yerebene, Ebema, Galaburi, Opuruma, you see the effects, you see the devastation, that how the whole environment has been destroyed. Even there was a child I saw at Yerebene that were born uh, uh, disabled. That it, 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 The first time I've seen somebody born uh, blind, born blind, crippled blind. This is he was the guy was born blind, crippled. That was, and what has as a result of these activities, you can see how this and you can see how cancer is being very very rampant in those areas. And initially, those people were looking at when this thing first erupted, they were looking at ah, it was a spirit, spirit has been killing. But if you go into it, you find out that it was as a result of these activities. To understand the impact of 60 years of sustained pollution, the Commission has undertaken two substantial pieces of scientific research. The first was a review by a team of forensic scientists to assess the degree of hydrocarbon contamination of soil, water and air, as well as species in the food chain seen across Bielsa. The second study was a health impact study conducted by a team of public health professionals based on the collection and analysis of blood samples taken from over 1,600 people in Bielsa. This program, which was coordinated by the world-renowned Professor Alan Jamieson, director at the Forensic Institute, fellow of the Royal Society of Biology, Glasgow, Scotland, commenced between November and December 2019. The results of both reports are stark. They show that toxins from oil pollution are present at often dangerous levels across the state and have infiltrated the food chain, 
ending up in the bloodstreams of those tested in affected communities. In some locations, highly toxic oil-related contaminants such as chromium are present in groundwater at over 1,000 times the approved World Health Organization limit, while in others, concentrations of millions of chemicals exceed safe levels by a factor of 1 million according to samples taken. Given this alarming profile of environmental contamination, it is not surprising that the Commission's sampling confirmed existing studies that showed high levels of toxins in many of the animals and fish species that form a key part of the diet of Bielsa's communities. This is indeed alarming. On the 1st of November 2019, at the presentation of the interim report of the Commission, to the Most Reverend and Right Honourable Lord John St. Tamil. The former Archbishop of York launched a blistering indictment of oil companies operating in the Niger Delta, calling their actions an environmental genocide. The former Governor of Bielsa State, Senator Seriake Dixon, branded oil multinationals operating in the state and other states in the Niger Delta region as environmental terrorists, gradually killing the people of the region with their activities. Oil and gas exploration have had a vast impact on Biosa's land, water systems, biodiversity and its people. Over the past seven months, the Commission had been inv investigating and gathering testimonies and evidence about the impact of the activity of multinational oil companies in Biosa State. The Commission has spoken to hundreds of people across the eight local government areas of Biosa. Hearing the impact of the environmental degradation and the wide-ranging impact on the people of this wonderful state has been deeply harrowing for myself and my fellow commissioners. I believe that we have seen amounts to a slow, in the end, a slow environmental genocide taking place here in Biosa State. And this has been allowed to go on for well over 50 years because, first of all, I want to suggest I no longer call it corruption, but I want to call it organized theft, regionally and nationally, on an unprecedented scale. I have always referred to what the oil companies are doing in our state, in the John Nation, in the Niger Delta, in our country, as environmental terrorism. Environmental terrorism. A terrorist is not only he who walks up to you and points a gun at you to get what he or she wants, or blows himself and others off for a purpose, personal, material, or ideological. We all know that story. But there's another brand of terrorism that is real, insidious, but very silent and which is what is going on. After four years of work, the Commission unveiled its final report at the House of Lords in London on May 16, 2023. The 211-page report titled An Environmental Genocide, Counting the Human Cost of Oil in Bielsa, Nigeria, documented over six decades of oil exploration and pollution in the state. The event was attended by His Excellency Senator Doye Diri, Governor of Bielsa State, and virtually by Senator Serake Dixon, former Governor of Bielsa State, former Anglican Archbishop of York, Member of the House of Lords in the United Kingdom, and Chairman of the Commission, John Sintamu. Present to you the report commissioned by your predecessor, and, um, and I hope all the recommendations you are going to make sure they all take place where the state is concerned, the federal government of Nigeria to take part, to persuade oil companies to be part of that great plan for cleaning up and also helping the environmental questions. So, sir, receive our hard work. According to the report, apart from oil spill, other sources of environmental pollution in the state were effluent waste disposal in the Brass Canal, dumping of drilling mud, artisanal refining, and gas flaring. It noted that the state experienced a spill every 12 hours for 14 years. 
It blamed the problem on a failed regulatory regime by the government, saying it lacked powers to discipline oil companies after finding them culpable. The panel also indicted the oil firms over failure of strategy, prevention, response and remediation of the oil spill incidents in their areas of operations. The report further noted that no country flares as much gas as a percentage of its total gas as Nigeria. Three local government areas accessed by water, Nimbe, Ekremo and Southern Ejo, which have a high number of oil operations, were the most affected by gas flaring. Several health studies have documented the connection between gas flaring and a range of chronic diseases including bronchial, rheumatic and eye conditions alongside hypertension. Constant inhalation of sulfur dioxide causes nose and throat irritation and shortness of breath, adding that prolonged exposure to flared gas has been associated with cancer and neurological, reproductive and developmental effects. The flares harm and disperse local wildlife and are associated with numerous ecological problems. In Ogwimbiri, Tebidaba, Southern Ejo, Ajib operates 24 hours gas flaring cycles. In Nimbe Creek 1, 2 and 3, Opuruma and Bahrain, the SPDC continually flare gas. The Bahrain Ubi gas processing plant belonging to the SPDC is a major concern. It therefore recommended a comprehensive cleanup of Bayelsa with a recovery plan to deal with health challenges arising from pollution, health screening of chronic and acute conditions, and facilitation of urgent access to safe water and food supplies, establishment of a recovery agency for the state, a new compensation scheme for the affected people, fundamental reform of the regulatory agencies, introduction of a new legal framework and new dispute resolution procedures and enhanced role for the state. The panel further recommended overhaul of their approach to community engagement to ensure transparency, accountability and community input. What this report does is give a lot of texture and personal stories to the evidence from the research about the impact in Bielsa, uh, which is in the Niger Delta, of the work of the oil companies. Uh, and you have uh, people's livelihoods have been destroyed over the last uh, 50 years. The incredible and devastating impact in terms of their health. Uh, the fact that oil companies are not taking responsibility when there are leakages in the pipes to fix them. Sometimes it takes years. Literally, you have black rain that is falling on people. I mean, respiratory uh, diseases are rife. People can't fish. Uh, there are no birds in the, the vicinity. The land has been devastated. People can't really get food. Governor Doyeduri, who received the report from Bishop St. applauded the panel members and his predecessor for taking the initiative. Decades, we in Bielsa have been forced to live with the scourge of what we now know as environmental genocide. Senator Dixon, who delivered his address virtually, said part of the motivation was to have a basis to hold the oil multinationals operating in the state and region accountable. In Bayelsa State, we are faced with massive destruction, devastation of our environment. Our rivers are filled with oil, crude oil, I mean. Our farmlands are destroyed mercilessly. Our people are unable to live healthy and prosperous lives thereby. The numbers being presented here today are large, shocking, and utterly unacceptable. The number of oil spill incidents, the number of barrels being spilled every day, thus making by Elsa the global capital of pollution, as I called it as governor, and that has not changed up till now. The profits of oil companies soaring in spite of the poverty of the people whose resources are devastated. The level of toxic chemicals polluting our soil, water and air, and the gas that is flared continually, and the number of livelihoods impacted by all of these. These cold, hard numbers, as you have heard, 
have real life, freely impact on the lives and livelihoods of our people. And we live with it daily. Senator Dixon was recently presented with an Excellence in Leadership Award on Environment. The award was conferred on the Senator for his contributions and stewardship in sustaining a healthy environment while serving as Governor of Bielsa State between 2012 and 2020. It was specifically for setting up the International Commission on Oil Pollution and its proactive decision to employ 250 graduates trained and posted to the Minister of Environment as forest protection officers to stem the unlawful felling of trees leading to massive deforestation in Bielsa, states in the Niger Delta, and in most states in Nigeria. Senator Dixon, who was recently made Chairman Senate Committee on Ecology and Climate Change, raised the alarm over the mindless deforestation in the country while we encourage afforestation to combat desertification as a result of global warming and the climatic changes that are causing floods and erosion and all of this, farming and wars even across the, across the continent, we should keep our eyes on preserving the trees that our ancestors did not cut and left for us. I want to use this opportunity to call on the governments and the local governments and community leaders and to call also on the federal agencies to pay attention to the reckless deforestation. Unfortunately, oil exploration and exploitation has led to large-scale environmental degradation which has massively affected climate change and the concomitant loss of over 40% of the mangrove forest in the Niger Delta since oil production began. This loss of habitat has been accompanied by a significant reduction of biodiversity, with populations of many species being all but wiped out at spill sites. Even if Nigeria's carbon footprint per capita remains low for decades, Nigeria is among the world's largest gas-flaring nations because of the activities of the IOC operators in Bielsa and across the Niger Delta. With the recent appointment of Senator Dixon as Chairman, Senate Committee on Ecology and Climate Change, indeed, there is no doubt that issues of the environment and climate change would receive critical attention in the Red Chamber and the country at large.